evening everyone and welcome to House and Home. I am so happy to have your company on another beautiful evening. Now, my name is Billie Jean Kubu and I am your host. Well, resting is good for your body plus the right kind of food and exercise to, you know, keep your body function properly and also decrease the risk of some diseases. Anyway, before I get carried away, let's head straight into our lineup. We have cooking and this time we feature a Fijian dish and I'm sure you are going to enjoy this. Plus, we have Brian Bell as usual and they will be featuring the user-friendly chemicals and we have some wonderful DIYs and Tech People wraps up the show. So without further ado, let's head into the kitchen and see what our friend, who is also a presenter and producer on one of MTV's program, which is The Woman's World, who will be featuring an exquisite Fijian recipe. Yum, I can't wait to see that. Enjoy. Hi everyone, I am Miriam from Women's World and welcome to this segment of Cooking with House and Home. Here I am this evening with my beautiful auntie, Auntie Wati, and we will be showing you how to prepare a traditional Fijian dish, which is known as Kokonda. And it is basically raw fish, which is marinated in vinegar or lemon, and then served with coconut milk. So today, Auntie Wati and I will be using yellowfin tuna, um, it actually de depends on the availability of the fish. You can either use this or mackerel or wahoo. But for this evening, we will be using yellowfin tuna. So what other ingredients will we be, be using Antiwati for our um, coconda dish this evening? Actually, it's uh, whatever you need for the salad. Like we have the lettuce and we have the coriander. Some people might like coriander. And we have the capsicum plus onions. If you don't have the, that spring, the onion, spring onions, you are more than welcome to use yes. um, the red onion that they sell at the supermarkets or at um, the markets nearby. Um, so here in Papua New Guinea, we are blessed with different types of vegetables that come in different types of colors. So as you can see here, we've already cut our capsicum. Here we have diced them. So we have the yellow capsicum, red and orange. We also have here um, our spring onion, then our purple onion and coriander. And in Fiji, this dish is actually eaten with a food crop. Um, so here we've decided to use tapioca, or in Fiji as they say cassava, but you can also use um, sweet potato as we say cow cow or taro, according to your preference and according to what you prefer, like to eat, yes. So here, Auntie Wati, what do we have here in our clear bowl? This one is coconut milk, as we grate that one already. And we got the juice out of it, and it's ready, waiting okay. to be served with the, with the fish. Um, so, Auntie Wati, have you included any type of uh, salt or pepper or anything, or it's just with, with no. water? No, with coconda, you need to uh, use lemon or vinegar. Because of the saltiness in them, you have to watch how you put the, the salt. But it's better just to get it ready because some people, we don't know who likes salt more and all those kind of things. Yes. yes. In Fiji, this dish is mostly like an entree for a function or there's a special visitor coming to your house and we always serve them with special food. And this is the entree. Thank you. And after you cut them into cubes to the size you like, and you can marinate it with what you have, lemon juice or vinegar. And then you can leave it. Uh, it is for lunch, you should do it in the morning or for overnight. So this is basically how the tuna should be cut. Tuna or mackerel, as I've said, whichever meat you, um, fish meat you prefer, to be diced into these sizes. Yeah. And then um, usually what if you are having the meal for lunch or for dinner, you can then marinate it in, like we said, vinegar or lemon juice the morning, early in the morning to prepare for, um, for dinner or for lunch. Um, it is not eaten as breakfast, it's only eaten as for lunch or for dinner. So yes, it is then marinated or if it's gonna be eaten sometimes at lunch, sometimes people prefer to marinate it the day before. Yes. yes. So this is basically how the tuna should be cut. 
Um, Auntie Wati has prepared some beforehand, so we will basically be just be showing you what it looks like when it's been marinated. She has chosen to marinate ours in vinegar. Thank you. This is uh, what I've done. So basically here we have the fish after it has been marinated in vinegar. After it has been marinated and it has turned to this color, it is then rinsed in water. So Auntie Wati will be rinsing it in a sink before it is ready um, to be plated. is ready to be put in the coconut with the coconut milk plus all the vegetables all the ingredients, ingredients that we already prepared thank you Miriam so here we have our raw fish that was being uh, marinated in white vinegar that has been rinsed in water as you can see here in a strainer it's been used to drain out the excess water it will be now placed into our bowl of coconut milk And, it's, and it is important to use the, the coconut that doesn't have the growth. So now as you can see, we have added our um, tuna, yellowfin tuna, marinated yellowfin tuna into our coconut milk. We will now proceed to adding our other ingredients, our capsicum. So while I'm doing this, Auntie Wati will be plating our bowls. And then now we, I shall be adding our spring onion, our onion and coriander. We haven't added any salt into um, our coconut milk as Auntie Wati had already mentioned because of the vinegar. It's, it would be too salty if you if you add salt, but you can al always do so according to your, your, your preference, yes. So now we just mix them all together. So we have to mix it thoroughly so that we can all get all the ingredients around it so that when you have your syrup, you'll get everything in it. A taste of everything, yeah. yes. So Auntie Watu will now proceed to serving our coconda. This is how it's actually served back in Fiji in small bowls. Yes, yes on a bed of lettuce as you can see here. So otherwise you're welcome to come and do your own because it depends on how hungry you are. <laughs> Thank you so much everyone for your time. As you can see, the dish here prepared by my auntie Wati and I is a traditional Fijian dish known as coconda, or in English it is a marinated raw fish being served in coconut milk. As you can see, we have prepared um, our cassava here or tapioca. You can have it with other types of root crops such as um, cow cow, yam to auntie Wati, right? Or taro. Um, but right auntie Wati, being Papua New Guineans, we love our rice, but is it possible to also have this with rice or it's preferable just to have it with food crops? You can, it's your choice, but uh, I think it, it works better with the root crop. With root crops, yes. Um, and also you can also have it with um, add chili or lemon if you, you feel that you need to add lemon, you're more than welcome to. Until next time, I am Miriam and this is my Auntie Wati. Thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully we can see you again next time on this cooking segment here on House and Home. Oh, 
Wow, thank you, Miriam, for the exquisite Fijian recipe. I'm sure everyone enjoyed it. So did I. And to be honest, I have never tried raw fish in my entire life of eating fish, but they were, you know, always cooked. So I'm excited and I want to try it out. So it's definitely going on my recipe list and I hope it's going on your recipe list as well. And now we're going to take our quick breather. But when we come back, we have more for you. Stay with us. Welcome back. Up next is Shopping with Brian Bell. And as you know, apart from all the products and services and the ranges of great brands that they have available, this is one of the products which is the user-friendly chemicals. Let's join Leon now as he talks more about it. Hey, hey, Mr. B. Hi there everyone, I'm Leon Gawi and welcome to another Shopping with Brian Bell, the informative segment that gives you some great insight into the products and promotions you can find here at Brian Bell. Now, one such product that everyone should be using in their homes are the chemicals that Brian Bell have available on their shelves. These are great products to help you clean up everything and the best part about it is that they are environmentally friendly. So without further delay, let's go and see how these products, which are both home and industrial products, can assist you in your day-to-day -day lives. Let's go take a look. Here at Brian Bell, we stock and sell a great range of quality PNG made chemicals, specifically Brian Bell chemicals, that assist in cleaning. There's an array of different chemicals to choose from, including the following. Result, clean degreaser and sanitizer concentrate, ideal for cleaning all types of grime and grease. Multi-clean or multi-purpose detergent concentrate, heavy duty cleaner for household domestic applications. Fantastic liquid laundry detergent, economical to use and leaves your laundry fresh and clean. As human beings, we've caused a lot of pollution to planet Earth already. Gas emissions, you know, chemicals being pumped into the ocean, that just causes a lot of unnecessary damage to the environment that we live in. Now, Brian Bell and part of their corporate social responsibilities have come up with these great products which are eco-friendly. Now, when I say eco-friendly, I mean that these products are all made from natural extracts and they're safe to use and more importantly, they don't damage the environment so our future generations can enjoy what we've known and grown to love. So, the first one that I want to show you is this flyaway from Brian Bell Chemicals that can assist you to keep all those nasty little critters and insects away from you. Organic cleaner, natural peppermint oil with insect deterring properties can be used to clean tables around barbecue areas, shops and bars. Spray and wipe cleaner, ideal to spray around outdoor settings before entertaining. This is a natural and environmentally friendly way to keep insects away. Cleans both indoors and outdoors. This is a great product to use in all the rooms in your house. Kitchen, bathroom, living, dining. This product will keep all those little critters away from you and at the same time, with its peppermint oil extract, it'll leave your rooms smelling fresh and clean. This product assists to keep the surroundings clean without using chemicals that end up adding to the damage already caused to the environment. This is also a natural repellent keeping away those nasty insects like flies, ants and mosquitoes. Now while we're on the topic of environmentally friendly products, Brian Bell has stopped the use of all plastic bags in all their home center shops nationwide. Now, this is a great initiative towards a greener future for Papua New Guinea. Instead of using plastic bags, we've chosen to go with these paper bags, which are 100% environmentally friendly, and you can find them every time you shop here at Brian Bell. That's right, we are now a plastic bag free zone and when you shop here at Brian Bell, all your goods will be packed into these cool paper bags and the best part is that these bags can be reused. So remember, if you can't reuse it, refuse it. Now the next product that I want to bring to your attention is Odogon. Now as the name suggests, this is an all natural product that cleans up and gets rid of all those unwanted musky smells in your home whether it's your smelly cupboards where your clothes were kept or that 
old carpet that just brings up all those rubbish smells that you just don't like or even the laundry that's stuffed up the room and it just leaves a remaining scent that you don't want to have anything to do with this product Odogon is perfect for you to use to clean up all those scents. Now you can use many other different deodorizers and air fragrances but I can assure you that the CFCs associated with those products may not be too good for your skin or your office or your home and the work environment that you live in. So this product is all natural and it's a great way for you to deodorize and clean up your home and make it smell fresher. Randall's Odogon is an alternative to traditional air fresheners. It's composed from botanic extracts. It removes pet odor, damp, musty and bad odors of all kinds. Can be used on basically any surface, fabrics, carpets and cupboards and leaves a fresh but non-intrusive citrus scent. Now if you're somewhat of a messy person like me, well, let's just not judge each other. You see, sometimes when we're cleaning up, we may lose track of that old pair of dirty socks that swept under your cupboard or your bed and you just lose track of it until it starts stinking up the room. Now that stench can remain. A simple way to get rid of that stench is with Odogon, which is a great tool or chemical that's environmentally friendly and gets rid of the stench in your room, leaving it fresh and clean. This product helps to remove that unwanted scent from messing up the ambience of your room. Bad odors will be a thing of the past with our eco-friendly Odogon scent removal chemical. Well, that's all the time we have for Shopping with Brian Bell. Before you go, here's a quick recap of what we covered. We saw some great chemicals that can assist you to keep the insects away with our Fly Away product. And we also saw Odogon, a great product from Brian Bell that you can use to keep your house smelling fresh and clean. So come on in, pick it up for yourself. And remember, these products are environmentally friendly. They're made from natural bio extracts, so it's safe for the environment. So the runoff or the when you wash and clean off and it goes back into the environment, it doesn't damage it in any way, shape or form. So come on in, check it out for yourself and don't just take my word for it. Come and shop here at Brian Bell. And when you shop here at Brian Bell, remember, in keeping with the theme of today, and it was just recently World Environment Day, our new paper bags are out. So come on in, shop here, pick up these paper bags. It's reusable. So if it's not reusable, refuse it and get reusable from Brian Bell. You can use it to go do your marketing. You can use it for many other different wonderful things. Not only do they look cool, but also they're great for carrying around all your shopping. And always remember, quality products, great services, great value. That's Brian Bell. Until next time, goodbye and God bless. Hey, hey, Mr. B. Right on, right on, Mr. B. Thank you so much, Leon, for that information. Now, if you are one that is interested to buy that, please feel free to drop by at one of the retail outlets and they will be more than happy to help you. Let's head out for a quick breather, but when we come back, we have more. Stay with us. My name is Nesta Baeka. I am 23 years of age and I am from Central. Um, I love sewing. Sewing is my hobby. I started sewing when I was in grade 8, that was in 2010. And I turned that hobby into something that I love doing and it became my career. I started sewing when I was in grade 8 coming up, but I didn't took sewing like really seriously. But as time goes by, um, just during this year, I started like, okay, why not I try something, something like serious. So I started a page on Facebook and I started um, selling my products on Facebook, Facebook only. That's how I get my customers. Um, the sewing machine, it belongs to my grandmother. 
from my dad's side. Um, it was when she died, my dad got that sewing machine and it just stayed there in the house. So when my mom doesn't allow me to use that sewing machine, but the only time that I use the sewing machine is when she's out. That's the only time I started sewing. And uh, um, what I'm really good at is I just look at things and I just pick up. So I started trying to, I started trying um, sewing. I started, um, so I, I saw it, I made a blouse. And then from there I picked up, then I went to knitting and there it comes. Okay, the inspiration behind all this, it, it comes from my mom. Like every time growing up, seeing her struggling and um, she used, she, um, she's an housewife. Um, she sells donut to um, give us bus fare and like that. So like those challenges made me like, it inspired me to like be serious in doing something. So I don't want my mom or my siblings down there to face the, um, the challenges or the situation that I went through because I went through and I, I saw that it was really tough. So I started using this hobby, sewing to um, do something bigger and more serious. Uh, yes, I have a fashion line, it's called House Mary Clothing. Um, I came up with this house Mary clothing when I left school at Garo Secondary in 2014. Um, I didn't get an offer to continue my education into any tertiary or colleges, so I stayed back home. Though I tried asking my dad to um, put me into any institution, but due to financial um, problem, he couldn't afford to, so I had to stay home all this time. So like these challenges that I faced staying at home, it made me like, okay. Um, it made me, got, that's how I got this name, House Mary. The first piece that I created was a Morabe style design, those uncut blouse. I started with that. Coming up, I started sewing a proper blouse with a hand sleeve. And from there, I started, I went through um, the knitting part and then just the last time last month I went to I attended uh, a sewing class at Lamana um, Nivan Taylorin has offered us a good training so I went there and that's how I came up with the next um, um, the dress as from time goes by I want to be a become a successful tailor that I can do anything with just using sewing machine. Uh, my biggest accomplishment was um, my I, I I started having customer a customer from WeWork, um, Ansel Mea Gabi. She's in WeWork. She used to order from me, and then she used to resell it there. She used to make up her own price and do resell there. That so that's one of my big accomplishment. My greatest advice would be from my dad. He always, he would always tell me to be myself. He would tell me not to pretend and to be, to be become someone that I am not. Yeah. If you're interested to buy a dress or get a merry blouse, you can simply contact me on the details show you on the screen right now. Catch me on Quick Stitch.
Hi everyone and thank you for joining me. Now on this edition, I will be showing you some kitchen hacks that you can do at home. Now these hacks are very simple, they save time and effort. So, let's get straight into it. Now after a fruit shake party with your friends and family, you'd wanna give your blender a quick clean. And this doesn't happen very often, but when it does, this will come to your rescue. Now I have a simple hack that I wanna show you. I use it every time after I blend my favorite fruit juice drink. Now, here how it's done. Add water. Add couple of Axion dishwashing liquid drops and close the opening of the blender. Blend the mess away, then rinse. You want your sponge to stay dry after dishwashing? Well, this hack is just for you. You will need a empty shampoo container, blade, and a sponge. Cut the bottom of the container right around, then cut a square on one side and on the other side, make an opening for the holder. And when you're done washing dishes, place the sponge into the holder and let the sponge drip to dry. I often forget to do this. But let's think about it. Our kitchen cabinets get filthy with food spatters and grease stains. And over time, that builds up and leaves a very nasty film that can be hard to scrub off. If you want something with more grease cleaning power, why not try this? A spray plastic container half filled with water, Axion dishwashing liquid, and wipes. Add the dishwashing liquid into the spray container and shake to mix well. Then apply the mixture to grease stained and dusty cabinets and benches in your kitchen. Are you tired of pressing liquid onto the sponge when washing a lot of dishes? Well, look no further than this because this hack will speed up your time when washing a lot of dishes. You will need a sponge, a clean and used hair cream container and make at least six holes that will allow the dish liquid to pass through. Axion dishwashing liquid and glue gun. Cut the sponge according to the shape of the lid. Then add dishwashing liquid into the container and close the lid. What you will do next is glue the sponge onto the lid and turn upside down to use. Stainless steel are tricky and very frustrating to wash. Not to mention stainless steel cleaners are pricey and sometimes don't work. A simple mixture of dish soap and water can clean your stainless steel appliances. This is how you can clean a stainless appliance and I use my microwave as an example. Add couple of Axion liquid soap drops into the spray plastic container which is half filled with water. Shake the mixture well, then spray the appliance. Leave for 5 to 10 minutes. Then wipe the sprayed areas to dry. These are some of the hacks that you can use in the kitchen or do while waiting for your food to cook. viewers i hope you have learned something new and i know you want to go and try it out right now but remember this dishwashing liquid removes stubborn grease and it is trusted to give a sparkling shine to your dishes and kitchen so until next time i will see you on the other side bye
Hello everyone, my name is Nesta. Welcome to Quick Stitch. Today we'll be sewing a Mary blouse called a Morave Uncut. Here's what you will need to sew a Mary blouse. You will need a fabric, a rayon fabric, a scissors, and your sewing machine. You can use your electric sewing machine, but I have a end machine, so I'll be using an end machine today. Let's get started. Um, so here's how we will cut the fabric. This, I am using a an one and a half meter rayon material. So you place your material. You fold it in half and then you fold it again. Like this. Okay. First we'll cut the gathering. That's the bottom part. Just to make sure it's the same size. You put the other one at the side and you cut. So now you have two pieces of gatherings. Okay, you put it aside. Next, we'll cut the body. It's up to you if you want to sew a uh, lawn if you want uh, the land to be long or if you want it short, it's your. But today we're gonna cut um, the short one, a short Mary blouse. So we would cut the half away, not a half, but just this little piece here. Like this. Then you cut. So this part is your body. This is a short Mary blouse, so it's short. But if you want it long, you can make it long. You can leave it as that. So this is your body. We'll start cut the side. If you're big in size and your ham is big, the triangle, when you, when you want to cut, the triangle will be big. You can cut from here, you see, if you're big in size. But if you're small, if your size is small, your triangle will be small, like this. Okay, so we'll cut down. So this is your body. And this is your gathering. So this part here that we have cut, we'll use it to do the end all and the neck. This part here. Okay, now we have two pieces here. The other piece, we're gonna use it for the neck and the other piece, we're gonna use it for the end doll. All right. We get the body. You can use a measuring tape to get the size of your neck. But today I'm just gonna cut because I am used to this cut. I don't use measurement. I'm measuring paper cut. So I'll be doing my size today.
Just gonna cut the neck. And then we'll start from one side. Okay, I'm gonna sew now. So I'm gonna start from the neck. The neck and the body. So this is how you're gonna hold your fabric. When you put your fabric to sew, you're gonna place your the neck part at the bottom and you place the body on top. Okay, that's how you're gonna place on your sewing machine when you're sewing. So we'll start sewing. Make sure to balance when you sew that the gatherings you do the end of the body must meet the edge of the neck. Okay, this is what it looks like when you join the neck piece to the body. You will do the same on the other side of the body. Okay, now we will sew the end all. You put your fabric, the body part, and you place the end all, the piece of end all onto the body from the edge. All right everyone this is what it will look like when you sew all your pieces together now we will have to fold the sides and sew this side and the other side so now we will join the gatherings with the body that's the last thing we will do So here we have the final product. This will only take you 30 to 40 minutes to do this at home. It's very simple and it's very good for ladies to wear it around during the day when it's hot. Um, until then, you can catch us on the other side. Welcome back. Wrapping up the show is tech people. And as we have seen from the past episodes, Clannard has been reviewing some awesome games and he was also doing some tech talks and reviewing some gadgets as well. And one of them was the pocket projector, which I enjoyed very much. Like I didn't know you could put a projector in your pocket. That was amazing. Like I said, technology is just going into another level these days and I can't wait to see what it will be you know in the next 50 years I hope I will be alive to see that anyway I'll stop here let's join Clannad on Tech People hello everyone and welcome to yet another edition of Tech People with me Clannad on Techno today, we will be looking at debunking some myths, Fallout 76 on tech picks, and on tech feature, we'll be looking at technology making a difference. 
So today on Tech Now, we will be debunking some myths and we will separate fact from fiction. Myth number one, you should let your phone battery die before you recharge. Truth? Most lithium batteries last longer when they are kept between 40% and 80% charged. In fact, leaving your battery discharged for too long may damage it permanently. Myth number two, you shouldn't charge your gadget overnight. Truth? Modern gadgets have mechanisms that automatically stop charging. So yeah, you'll be fine. Myth, the higher the pixels, the better the picture. Truth, the higher the pixels, the smaller and more numerous the pixels in the picture will be which means the picture may be noisier and in bad light quality may not be so good. So under normal lighting, even a 6 or 8 megapixel camera would provide better pictures than an 18 megapixel camera. <laughs> Myth number four, more bars means better service. Truth, bars indicate signal strength, not service quality. So you may have a lot of bars, but if there are lots of calls or texts or gamers around you, you may have bad service. Myth number five, private or incognito mode keeps your internet activity private. Truth, while browsing, history may be kept hidden, but service providers can still track where you've been. Yeah, so not completely private. Myth number six, using a cell phone at the service station is a fire risk. Truth, there have been no reports of servos going up in flames because of phone signals or anything of that nature. However, I will advise that rules like no smoking and turning off your engine be followed. Myth number seven, cell phones cause cancer. Truth, cell phones emit electromagnetic radiation in the form of non-ionizing frequency radio waves. Yeah, try saying that five times. To date, the only known side effect of these waves on people is that they can generate a small amount of heat on the portion of the body closest to it. Medical studies have found that with lengthy conversations, the side of the brain nearest to the phone builds up glucose, but this has no major or lasting effects. However, staring at your phone for too long may cause eye strains, loss of concentration to your surroundings, which may cause injury to you and others, and you may forget the pot of rice you put on the stove four hours ago. So yeah. Tactics. Fallout 76, an RPG set in post-apocalyptic worlds developed by Bethesda Game Studios. So you can follow the storyline, participate in death matches, or just go online and smash. It's a prequel to the series of games that came before it. Players explore the open world which has been torn apart by nuclear war. Thanks to their creation engine, the game accommodates multiplayer gameplay and a more detailed game world. When the game was first released back in 2018, it did cop some heavy criticisms with problems with technical issues. And like the overall design and the lack of purpose in the gameplay, among other things. But Bethesda released a new update fixing those problems. So yeah, overall, if you want a game that has some adventure and fun in a barren futuristic world, this is the game for you. So on Tech Feature now, we will be looking at technology making a difference. There have been many technological advancements made over the last decade and many of them have been for the benefit of mankind. And here are the top three picks of technology making a difference. Deep in the remote jungles, aid posts are hard to reach, but with drones, drugs and other necessities can be flown out to them with very little risk. In rural areas, eye testing has been quite a rarity with teams or medical facilities not being available. But thanks to smartphones and the new Vula Eye Health app, clinics and health workers in remote areas can perform eye tests and diagnose patients. It also connects health workers to registered specialists who can provide assessments and assistance wherever necessary. Prosthetic limbs have come a long way since the days of pirates on wooden legs. Today's prosthetics are giving people new hope. A new mind-controlled prosthetic arm called the Quartz could be the future of prosthetic limbs. The developers are trying to get arm sensors to detect neurons like a normal like nervous system would. However, it is only a prototype in its testing phase, but it looks very, very promising. Thanks again for watching, guys. It was great having your company. I've been getting some great feedback from you guys. Like sometimes I bump into people at the shops and they say, hey, I love your show. I'm like, yeah. I hope you guys continue to keep watching this segment. Love you guys. And yeah, with that, it's goodbye for me. And thanks for watching.
you so much, Clara, for another awesome Tech Talk. Now, we have come to the end of our program, but if you would like to view this episode again, please visit MTV online or like us on our Facebook page, comment on what you have seen and what you would like to see more of in the coming episodes. Now, on behalf of the entire House at Home team, thank you so much for your company, pleasant viewing, and good night. <laughs>